Hi, it's Leo from Me by Marley. Welcome back to our channel. Today, um, I'm going to show you the piece in a moment. I'm sure this has happened to you because it does happen to me. Um, you paint, you start painting a piece and you think you're, you're trusting your process, but there's a nagging doubt and you don't like it 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 until you've gone so far into it that you really dislike it. That happened to me. I was painting, I was up till half past one, was it half past one last night? Well, yeah. Half past one, painting away, thinking that I was trusting my process, but you can only trust your process if you really trust it and you think it, this wasn't a case of it was going, it didn't look good, but it was going to get better. This was just a case of the concept was a little bit wrong in the beginning. So I painted my piece with um, Annie Sloan's Versailles, which is an off white kind of creamy sort of tinty sort of green in it it's a nice color and i will show you the piece now now don't be horrified as martin pan yeah that happened however i love it <laughs> <laughs> He brought it back into me, sanded, and I went, oh, I love it, I love it, I just love it. So today I am going to show you how I'm going to work with this. So basically I'd had two coats of the Annie Sloan paint. It had just been the Annie Sloan sort of crosshatch motion all over the sides, and on the top it was stippled because it had a few scratches. That's all that you've missed. Martin took it outside. And he just went to town with the sander on the front of it. So to recreate this piece, paint your piece, take it back to your workshop, Sand it and bring it back in <laughs> and you're good to go. So I'm just going to get sorted with paint. So here we are. I've got to say I really like it. This has loads of potential. but um, And this isn't the first time I've done this. Martin has sanded a piece uh, well, about a year ago that came back in or came over to the, my studio and I worked with it as it was so you know maybe it's something to try. I know it seems a little bit like <gasps> but you know the result is this, and I like it. In every cloud, there's a silver lining. Right, I'm going to be using my new decoupage paper. This is called Woodstock. It has the tight pattern, the ditzy pattern on the two, and the big one has the main flower. Um, it absolutely 100% matches my background, so I'm running with this. So what I'm going to do... Um, off camera is I'm just going to go away and mix up because I'm going to need an orange, a purple, I'll have a red but I just need to peel that back because it's ready sort of pink, a yellow and a black um, and I'll get these onto my mix mat and we are going to start by I think probably laying down some paint. So looking at this I'm just giving you a rundown of what I've used here this is Capri Pink and Oxford Navy. Okay, so I'm doing a voiceover on this part. Um, it was Tilton and the one I'm, the colour I'm pointing at is Tilton and some Barcelona Orange. Then it was Emperor Silk mixed with a little bit of Old Ochre to make a pink. And I'm just kind of pointing out how I'm going to kind of mix them together and how they work with the decoupage paper. Um, so I'm just turning around my mix mat just to kind of prep myself here. Sorry, my microphone broke, so I'm never very good at voiceovers. So I'm applying all this with a palette knife, and this is really important. This is why I didn't cut this part out, just so you get it. What I'm trying to actually do at this point in time is I'm reapplying the cream, which is the old ochre, with a palette knife to, to make lots of texture to help it match in from the areas that have been sanded. Now, I'm probably warbling on crazy here, but I'm just kind of obviously showing you the way to put it on. You don't want to cover your whole panel of your door, but you want to make it look like it has been sanded off as well. And the reason why I'm actually putting the cream on is because when I rip the center out of the, um, the middle of the large printed sheet of wood stock, the flowers have cream behind them and they are going to sit really well on this background. Now I'm only putting the cream on one door to show you at this point, but obviously you can understand that what I'm going to do is I'm going to recreate this on the other side of the door. Pay attention to your edges. Don't run it right down to the edges. Just make it look like it's a bit of a distress around the edges and your palette knife will help you do this. Now what I'm doing here is I'm going back in with my colours now. So I'm starting with the orange and I'm paying close attention to where I want to put the colour. Now at this point, 
where you put your colours is really kind of up to you, but it's the palette mix that you've saw me. And I'm just going around it and I'm adding lots of texture and colour. Um, this is me applying the, the, the sort of orange, which is the Tilton and the Barcelona orange. I think maybe a touch of Hornflower Brown in there as well, mix this colour. I'm putting it on the cream as well. You can see I'm being quite, you know, I'm, I'm not being sparing. I'm putting it on quite thick. So while I'm doing this, I'll just tell you how my microphone broke. I managed to spill Annie Sloan paint in the connector where my microphone goes. <laughs> so <laughs> Matt was sitting beside me and he's laughing. So yeah, and so I had to take it to a repair shop to get it done. <laughs> so while I, and they while, were like, there's green paint in it. <laughs> so, so and they said to Matt there was green paint in it. And I was quite ashamed. I I I I felt at that point in time, to be honest, and explain what had actually happened. It fell in the paint. Anyway, that's a little bit of hilarity for there so I'm, I'm obviously I'm still going along this piece right now flipping and flipping back and forward I think from the sort of lighter um yellow and the the sort of mustardy color that's me adding some of the yellow I can see that in I can see that because I've already done this <laughs> it's really weird doing voiceovers it's just not my thing so I'm doing it I'm putting it bringing it down to the all the edges the edges are really important this is a really important part and it's such a shame that my microphone broke, broke at this point in time because these are the parts that are going to pull it all together when you put your decoupage paper on so once you've got what you think is quite good with your orange and your yellows, you can start bringing in your reds. Now, there is red in the decoupage paper, but there's also a sort of pink. Now, you, if you use Annie Sloan paint, you could use Scandinavian pink if you didn't want to mix it up. But I just used Emperor Silk with a little tiny bit of old ochre in it just to lighten it up. That just kind of gives you a brighter kind of shade in amongst it all. I'm putting it into the grooves and the recesses of the doors. But where you put your orange... Kind of look at where you put your orange and think, where would the red go? So you can see I'm framing out the edges of the door there. Um, I'm kind of like just mixing it up at this point and I have no idea what I'm actually saying, but I think probably I'm saying to you, keep the big large areas of cream. Um, we are going to be working with that, um, the cream, when we put the decoupage paper down. And obviously, I'm because I'm trying to make it work like it's all been aged on purpose, like this has happened naturally, not on purpose. So I'm obviously putting the colours back onto the edges as well. So that's pretty much what I'm doing. I'm holding up my decoupage paper just to see that it all works. And we'll move on to the next stage. Okay, so I'm just playing this on here so you can see where I've ripped out. This shape here is this part that I have ripped out of here. There it is there. I've predominantly kind of left the pinks and the reds out. I couldn't help. I've got one of the poppies in there. That's fine. I'm just going to work with that. Now, all your little bits that you rip up, keep them because you are going to need them. If you're going to try and create this, you're going to need all your little pieces and parts. Now, I think I had decided that this is going to go on here like this. So, a nice smooth flat brush and Mod Podge. And you remember, you need to make sure that you cover every surface. Now, this one is going to be a little bit tricky because I have added loads of texture onto it. And take a badge paper doesn't like things that are too wrinkly. So we're going to have to do a little bit of work to get this to lay down nice and flat. But it's not, not, not going to be the end of the world. We can do it. So I'm just making sure. I mean, I've over-egged it here. I'm, doesn't go down as far as all those corners but I just want to make sure that I've got all the surface covered before your last kind of put it on make sure that you smooth out all of your Mod Podge because decoupage will wrinkle for two reasons one that you've missed a bit of glue and two that there's too much bumps going on underneath set that to the side and was it this way or was it this way it was this way and I'm gonna buy that to here like that i'm going to start up at this top area and make sure it's down nice and then just go down it like this and it should go on beautifully now i am not going to touch that now there is not a wrinkle in it a bump because that's just what's underneath um, I'm going to leave it and then what I'm going to do is I am going to literally 
Mod Podge around all my edges just to make sure that they're down but I'm going to do that once they're dry okay so I'm going to go on and I'm going to do the same thing to this side that I've done here so that we've got flowers on both sides we've got this one on now we're going to do this one now Martin and I deliberated I didn't want it this way because if it had been running in a different way with this flower over here and it ran that way that would look really good but it doesn't it's the same as this and it doesn't translate because i don't want this flower here and this flower here if this flower was over there that would be different so I put a little bit of masking tape on it just to show martin that i how, think how no not how wrong you were <laughs> i was just trying to show you they're going up that way these are coming down that way it just it has a better flow I, that's all i was trying i wasn't trying to prove a point with you right so um this is the way i'm going to put this one on so i'm just going to do the same thing that i did on this side and do my mod podge on this side and then we will get to having a look at how we pull the rest of the paper together and i've got you can obviously if you rip the decoupage paper you've got i'm going to start bringing some of the cream into this and i'll maybe do that next just to show you but i really wanted to I'm, i think i'll make sure that it's properly dry before i do that um you can rip it obviously for your fibers to help you blend it but if you're not wanting to blend it and you're putting it over something that's really texturized and you just want the texture to show underneath obviously you can cut it so i was just about to cut the the sheet with the the smaller details and um, the contrasting sheet to get the line of poppies out of it and i'll show you that in a minute so um yes yeah, so i want to go this way a bit of masking tape off. There we go, and that's that applied on that side. into the edges you don't want any sort of lift sorry i'm speaking very quiet sorry when i you know when i concentrate i get really quiet sorry matt is telling me i'm speaking really quiet it's because i'm concentrating right so i've got those on there now what i was about to show you was i had started to cut out these poppies which i'm going to cut out the line of these now this could take a kind of hot minute um i wasn't being completely sort of like really really you know like tidy about it but you know i was i was trying to cut them out right um i'm going to cut these all out off camera because nobody wants to see me cut out these poppies and then we're gonna i'll have two rows of these using the paper that i have because i can take the row off the other side so let's see what we can do with the poppies so just give me a minute off camera and I'll just go and cut these out. So I've cut the poppies out and I'm going to put the row of poppies. When I find my other poppies, I seem to have lost them. There's two say, aha, the two lots of poppies are going to go along here. Um, and I'll just cut this here. And I, what I'll do is I'm going to try and give you an idea of how my head works. So I think these are going to go up along here, something like that this part here is this part here i just cut it and i ripped out these two sections and this part is going to go along here but this part here i just straightened up the scissors and this part here to kind of both sides i'm making it a sort of hodgepodge of putting on my decoupage paper and then i'm going to put the color back over the top of it so it all beds back down but i'm just getting the design underneath it first before i can go back and do that so this is how it's going to be kind of shaping up and i think it's going to be shaping up pretty cool so what i'll do is i'll i'll glue this part here down and i'll cut this one out and put this on here and i'll stick down my poppies you've seen me mod podge before i'm just gonna stick my poppies on and i'll get this section out of here and i'll do that part there then we'll we'll work from there onwards yeah so 
I've been applying all the decoupage paper that I said I was going to apply. We were going to get back to doing the distressing over the top and making this all work in a minute. But I've just got, I've got some pieces and parts left over and it's a shame not to use them. I'll probably carry this part here round the corners, round the base all the way around to give it some interest on the side. I'm not going to do this crazy pattern on all the sides and I'm still deliberating on what I'm going to do on the top. But um, what I've got left is... When you rip up the decoupage paper, there's there's like two parts that are left over. But if you kind of you can kind of cleverly sort of adjust these together, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make a sort of um, sort of design in the centre here with all these things that are left over. So if I put these this way, I'll put these behind the decoupage flower, and because this is the join of the door, I can go kind of straight along here like this. Um, and tuck it in and just to kind of show you other ways to use it and as I said we'll fix it all and we'll make it all bed down in our um with our distress I'd put bits of tape on this earlier because I was kind of like still fiddling around with the sort of basic the basic sort of concept uh, I think I'm going to do something like this I don't mind if it goes over here because Martin will have to work out where the keyholes are going to go. Won't you, Martin? That'll keep you entertained. Coming back. <laughs> All right. And I think I'm going to do my big sort of. And obviously, when you're doing decoupage, you need to wait till everything dries solidly before you can cut it all with a razor blade. Don't start, I wouldn't start messing about with things until you know, you've know you got it kind of dry. But you do want to do a little bit of a groove and go just so that you don't pull it away. There's not too much pull back when you do it. And I always think my nail's probably the best thing to do that with. You're just kind of doing that there. So that there, and I'm just going to do over here i don't mind that it's slightly off like that when you join to and you've got a straight line we are going to have to put some paint over that there just to camouflage that part and this is the good thing about decoupage paper you can keep going and keep going and keep going but I, I will make that work in a minute there and i've got these sorts of pieces of flowers that I'm probably going to do on either side but you think you're getting the sort of general the gist of what I'm doing I'm just I'm just wanting to I don't, I don't like to waste things and I've got these sitting here so I may as well use them this way when I'm adding the cream in I can do a little bit of cream distress so we'll put this down this end down here so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go way off camera and I'm going to have to mix up the whole gambit of colours that I used in the beginning because I used them all on the first lot of distress so I'm going to have to do that and once we've done that we're going to start bringing probably some of the black into it. I'm wondering whether some of these cut up but I'm going across two cupboard doors here for when I go to slice it. I'm, I don't really like to go with too many small pieces and parts but We'll see if we can make that work. Let's push that in there like that. And I've got another one that I could put. This one's a better cut out one here. So that's just filling in that part there, and um, which gives it something else. Because I might do a little bit of either stamping or stenciling to make that work there. And I'm quite happy with the sort of play of everything else. So I'll go and get my paint ready. And by then, this will be dry so that we can start blending in everything else and making it work, okay? Okay, so let's start pulling this together with the paint now. So uh, I've got some of the original paint colour here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to distress this down to get rid of ear lip, but also to make it look like this part was initially cream. Now, it does help if you don't have blue on your palette now. Oh, gosh, now I've got pink on it. It's not having a good time here. 
get back to that in a minute. So all I'm doing for the drawers is bringing it down and working it up. Um, bringing it down, working it up like that. And I'm going to do the same at the bottom as well. Um, now this this drawer here has got a bit of an overhang. I need to um, uh, sand this edge here off. So I'm not going to work on that edge just now. But this edge here, I'm just going to do high and low just to make sure that it's kind of eradicating that edge. I mean, this piece is going to be quite distressed, but this is what I think I was looking for. I'm really quite happy with it. So I suppose that's all that matters. Um, so, oh, I'm flicking paint everywhere. This is this is what I'm going to do with the other drawer over here. So you know I've showed you that much because I'm just going to try and do what's I'm leaving this edge here just now because I've got to get rid of this bit here. But I can probably do that. Bring that down there. But yeah. So and then the, these are the edges that you don't you don't want all these little parts seen. I want it to look like it's now, don't worry too much if there's a little bit here because we're going to sand this. Always sand under here because you're going to get a bit of build up, especially if you're using a palette knife. I'm going to try and slip that in a little bit without interfering with anything else. Now, this part here I'm happy with, but I do think it does need just a little bit of this just to bring in the cream because up here is quite, you know, like it's got the colours on it, but it's not got any cream. So let's just to do something like this just a little bit just a little bit that's enough for there i'm leaving this like this because i think it just looks completely different to everything else it's been cut out and stuck on and i'm leaving it to make it look like that what i've done in between and i started doing this is i've got a paintbrush and i'm taking this color into the rest of my paper but when it comes to these edges where you've got your distress, you then have to follow up with the palette knife because you don't want to have brush strokes on it. So I'm going to do that. I've done that round most of this. There's some parts that I haven't. And you can take it back to paper. I'm going to paint these black leaves back in in a minute. Uh, I've done this side here and all I did was I just run the cream down into here like that to, to make that work. And so down here, you would just do the same. You're just pulling it up in the opposite direction. And this edge looks too neat. If it was worn, this here would be a little bit more, a little bit more um, distress on it there. So that's that. That We know that's that. That's it. So we have to work on this section in the middle. Now, you're going to have to do it in two ways here because I'm going to have to use a brush and a palette knife. So... I'll just do this part here so you know what I'm doing. So I'm bringing this around here like this. But then I'm going to get hold of my palette knife and I'm going to go bring it down. I still haven't cut, obviously, here with, with a Stanley knife blade yet. So I'm just going to do the same thing around here. There's a little bit of paper there that isn't... It helps if you keep a little bit of your Mod Podge on the side of your mix mat so that when you do, because this is your best way of getting around your piece and knowing that everything is stuck down when you're doing something like this because you're going across the whole piece. So the wee top tip there. So you can bring that down, but you don't want it like that. So how I'm going to blend this here, I'm just going to go. I'm going to come back in with some colour over the top of this, but I need to let this part dry first. I just want it to look like there was white underneath it um, before we kind of begun. And the best way to kind of do this is to go around it with a brush and then put your distress in with your palette knife. Because you're with all the best will in your world, your, your brush is never going to give you the same um, texture as the palette knife would. Yeah, I'm just going to work around this. I mean, I'm scared that I'm showing you too much and you've kind of like, but 
that's all I'm going to do. I'm just, I'm just tidying it all up and making it all work together. Now that's all I'm doing. Um, just doing two colors. Now, what I'll be doing in a minute is, and it depends how dry things are. This is not dry enough to use, but I've mixed out the rest of my colors that I used on because they'll be put like I'll bring the pink back down into the white here and I'll put some yellow into it and I've got a big splodge there. Oh, she just left it actually. It did. Yeah, there you go. Um, so that's all I'm doing. I'm just gonna go around the whole piece now and make it all work like this. So I'm gonna do this next to make it all work so that I don't see pieces that look like they've been stuck on with decoupage paper, apart from this piece here, which obviously we've, do, we've done. But um, then once we've done that, I think I'm going to do a wee bit of hand painting, just a wee bit, and a wee bit maybe of stamping. We'll see how we go. Yeah? Uh, okay, so what have I done? Off camera, I just put the colour back in over the top of the white, and that's all I did. I just put it where I wanted to put it. Uh, I did go around these flowers with a little bit of pinky red. I thought they were just kind of like didn't work. So I've done that and um, I blended in where there was the join across here. And I've just pretty much, and I did this color band down here. It just was too white. So I brought that in. I put a bit more purple and a bit more of the goldy orange in here and on the sides. And that's all I've done. And again, I just used my palette knife. I just put it back over the top of the cream. Remember the layering. Now, once I've done that, I just wanted to be test off camera. I got this stamp here. It's a redesign by Prima Stamp. I can tell there's pink on the back. And I just did here and here and along there and up the tops of my drawers. Just here and there. I have, I've only got a little bit on this side. Just to kind of do that. Now, I'm deliberating. I have this little um stamp but i also have this stencil i'm going to put i'm going to try and bring this and make this into some kind of like border around this door so i've just got black state look at the state of my mat is that not disgusting <laughs> and i've left brushes and water and oh it's everything disgusting mess but um, the mix mat has been such a great thing for me to have. Um, so I'm just going to do it kind of in a bit because it's on the... It'll show up nice. Now these are always a wee bit tricky because they're so long and thin. Okay, you should maybe keep them on the mounts, but... Well, I didn't. So just that there. So it's just a little kind of bit of... It's kind of like these parts here. It's just another little part of interest. And uh, I don't intend to put it everywhere, but just kind of in some areas. So much texture that it's not. Yeah, yeah, I'm quite liking that. So I'm going to do that around the edges, but not all of them. So I'll do a part here and maybe a part here like that. Make it look like it's worn off there. There's no point putting on the dark wood because it really doesn't show up incredibly well. We can try, but, but it won't show up that well. Yeah. I'm going to do the same on this door in a minute. But now to finish off, just find a place where I can squidge some black out. I've got some artist brushes here because there is a leaf here that is missing. Could do with something here and there's a leaf here that's missing and i just want to paint these in in the same sort of style that this is so it's kind of scribbly really to be honest with you it's just a bit just a bit scribbly which is fine because we can do scribbly quite well and they've kind of like blotted out half of the leaf and and on the other side is and you know what that's 
just I just I thought you know it could do with a little bit more black and I'm just going to fill it in so it's a bit more solid so you can see what I'm doing here I'm just I'm just filling in these black leaves I I think that it works I mean I put the black in the design and when I did this I thought you know that kind of gives options if you want to dark it up it really could be doing with coming on to here like this there you go I was trying to do a bit more um and these all they're wet at the moment but they should kind of dull down to this sort of color and I'm maybe just do one here as well I don't want to go crazy with them it's just a suggestion something like that I'm going to put this stamping on here so I don't want to cover that up but I think that kind of makes makes things have some some sort of kind of sense now having these I'm just going to paint that one in black like that um, right we're getting to the kind of stages now where I'm going to open this all up with a Stanley knife fix all my edges and get to sealing there's not really a huge amount more that I'm going to do to this I think it's got enough going on I'm not touching the top and I'm not touching the sides they were all painted and they were painted really well so I'm just leaving that I think that this is there's quite enough going on in this one so I'm just going to leave it like that okay so we're finished so this is a case of happy little accidents or how to make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. I'm not quite sure which one. It was sanded because I had decided to pivot and change my mind on it. And when it came back into the makeshift studio, I was like, hmm, I really like that. So I ran with it. This is what I did. I've added my own decoupage paper, which is... Um, called a uh, woodstock and it will be out this thursday the 16th um it's a really lovely cheerful bright paper i blended it in with some cream some orange some pinks some reds and um i did a little bit of stamping a little bit of distress and i really like it it's really unusual and i picked these uh, these are not the handles i actually went and bought handles for this piece specifically to match it and when i went to look i also bought these at the same time for another just in case another piece of furniture came along that needed nice handles and i actually changed the handles and decided to run with these ones so um i now have some orangey colored handles which i'll probably never use um these ones here i think really work well with the piece mats put it on it's all been sanded it was cut you know with the razor blade it was all all its sanding was done at the edges and it's been properly sealed and that's it ready to go and it's done and i'm really happy with it i think it's a really cheerful it's very summery i think um yeah it's nice so what can i say about that um that just shows you you know when things happen you don't you, there i know i keep saying trust your process but sometimes you get into the process and you go I just don't like it and if you just don't like something it's not a case of it looking a bit messy and you know it's going to come good what I was doing on this piece was never going to come good I just didn't like it and you don't like it pivot so here's my advice for today if you don't like it just get rid of it start again you're just going to waste a lot more of your time and a lot more energy and your mental health can't take it so just move on from it <laughs> well mine's can't <laughs> um Okay, so I've been laid off from me by Marley. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all the comments. Thanks for all the likes. Thanks for all the shares. Thank you tremendously for all of the people that have subscribed recently. As I said, it keeps going up and up and up, and that's brilliant. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, why don't you consider subscribing? And then you can see more things that go wrong and how I put them right. <laughs> so that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.